So you want to cut something out with the laser cutter. First you got to draw it. But what size do you need to draw it? How big is the laser cutter? What are the limitations? I'm going to show you. What you need to do is set on shape up to work in millimeters first. So if you click on this little stack of uh, three bars here, the hamburger button, you can go to workspace units and set it to millimeters. Uh, the rest of these settings should be fine. Once you do that, it's nice to have some guides as you're working. So I'll usually do a sketch um, on the top and I will just create a box and that box is hang on I'll show you the dimensions somewhere um, I'm blind there we go that box is 500 by 300 so that's basically your on shape um, cutting surface right there or not your on shape but your Glowforge cutting surface so if you keep your drawing within here it should fit in the laser cutter and everything should be good um, now I have set up a couple of other sketches um, because drawing on this means these lines could end up getting in the way um, and making it hard to trim or add fillets or whatever else you want to do. Um, so if you set that up as one sketch and then leave it in the background and create a new sketch, you can still snap to points on this first one, but uh, it doesn't get in your way as you're trying to work. So I've got another sketch here. Uh, this one's going to be an airplane. You can see it's all laid out here in millimeters. And let me just discard that. I've got a second sketch here, the body of the plane. Discard that. What you need to do, aside from just drawing these things, is you need to get them out of Onshape in a format that Inkscape can read. Inkscape is a software that we're going to use to go between on shape and the Glowforge laser cutter. Uh, so what you need to do is, uh, I can turn these on so you can see them. It's okay if they overlap here, they will be separate files. Um, what you need to do is right click on one of your sketches and export as a DXF. When you do that, name it and then click export and export both of them. Once you've exported them, uh, if you have this, if not, I'm probably doing this step for you, but it still doesn't hurt for you to know what's going on. Uh, this is Inkscape, and what I did was I created a new document, and then I went to Document Properties, and I set it up to match the size of the Glowforge um, cutting bed. So it's 500 wide, 300 tall. I then went to File again, and imported and I went and found the DXF files that are right there and I brought them in now these are not quite ready to cut they would be good for engraving but not cutting in order to cut them I need to come over here to the fill in stroke settings which may or may not be there um, in your version of Inkscape if you do load it on your computer um, you might have to find it over in uh, your drop down menus first and then turn that feature on. Anyway, um, they can't, these lines can't have any fills. Um, so if I zoom in, there's some thickness to them. So the fills should not be turned on. And the stroke paint, which is the lines themselves, should be solid. And the stroke style should be 0.1 millimeter. So we're, all, we're still too thick right now. That would just um, make the laser go back and forth and sort of draw over it like it was trying to color in and fill in that area. We just want one single cut. So point 0.1. You can see that these just got a lot thinner. And if I zoom out, click on the other DXF that I had there, same thing. No fill, solid stroke paint, stroke style of point 0.1. All right. Whoa, wait a minute. I just scrolled my mouse when I should not have 0.1. Let's try that again. All right. That's what I meant to do. So this is ready for the laser cutter. Now, I would just go to File and Save As. It has to be an SVG file. Inkscape can produce lots of files. We're just going to use an SVG. I'm going to throw it on my desktop for now. That should be it. You know what I should have done first? I should have loaded up my Glowforge app. I didn't. It 
it's just a website the Glowforge is connected to our school network and um, only the Glowforge owner can log in or those I give permission to so if you end up working with this a lot I might give you your own login um, but for now just me don't save that this is the Glowforge dashboard you can see I've already got some other things here I've cut up so I'm just gonna hit create upload from file go to my desktop oh I'm already on the desktop um, all right I named it test plane there it is and magic should have been happening okay there it is taking a sweet sweet time all right and there is the bed of the glowforge um, it doesn't say that it's offline so must be I left this on uh, when I left school the other day um, up here in the corner it has unknown material this is just the base mesh that's in there we would have to then put cardboard or wood or plastic or whatever we were cutting or engraving but up here it wants to know what we're using and for now, we're going to cut these planes out of cardboard. So I'm going to use an uncertified material. The thickness of the cardboard is 0.154 inches. The Glowforge works in inches, even though Inkscape works in millimeters. It's kind of weird, but it works. Now I click on the little thumbnail. I'm going to choose the cardboard settings, which I've already set the power and speed of the Glowforge, as well as the focus height. And that's it once it's set uh, these lines turns orange turn orange and that lets you know it's ready to cut uh, I can also drag this around and there is a camera built into the Glowforge so if we had cardboard laying in here I could lay this on the cardboard and make sure it actually fit and then oh it does say offline it took a while to show up um, and then I could click the print button and uh, start cutting that out but that's the process of getting from Onshape into Inkscape and then finally into the Glowforge so we can cut out our objects.